We now know that the demand curve tells us how much the quantity demanded of the good on the horizontal axis changes as the price of that good and only the price of that good changes. But how much we demand of a good doesn't typically just depend on that good's price. It can depend on lots of other things as well. So we could say that the demand for a good is a function of the price of that good, but it's also a function of other things like income or other prices in the economy. Or it might be a function of how much we know about what kinds of other goods are on the market or what kinds of tastes we have. So there are lots of things that can determine at any given time how much of a particular good we demand. The demand curve only focuses on what happens as the price of that good changes. So along the demand curve, we hold fixed everything else. So we can put bars across everything else to indicate everything else is fixed along that demand curve. But what if one of those things changes? What happens then? Well, in those cases, demand curves might shift. Think, for example, about an increase in income. At your current income, suppose that you face a price of $3 per gallon for gasoline, and your current demand curve tells you that this is how much of gasoline you're going to consume per week. Then you experience this increase in income. What's going to happen to that point that you're currently sitting on on your current demand curve? The price isn't changing, so we're going to stay at the same horizontal level. But when income increases, the quantity we demand might change. If gasoline is a normal good, an increase in income will cause us to consume more gasoline. So if gasoline is a normal good, then at that same $3 price, you'll now buy more gasoline. So that point will shift to the right. Similarly, every other point on the demand curve will shift to the right. If you previously the price of $4, we're going to consume this much gasoline. Now you're going to consume more when your income went up if gasoline is a normal good. So the whole demand curve is going to shift to the right with an increase in income if gasoline is a normal good. And similarly, if income falls and gasoline is a normal good, it'll shift to the left. Suppose gasoline was an inferior good. What would then happen to the demand curve? We can again redraw our initial demand curve at the initial income. So suppose that again the price was $3 and our initial demand curve told us that this is how much gasoline we'll be consuming per week. Now suppose that income increases and suppose that gasoline is an inferior good. Well for an inferior good an increase in income causes a decrease in consumption. So if the price doesn't change and all that happens is that income increases, if gasoline is an inferior good, then that point is going to shift to the left. And the same thing is going to happen to every other point. So the whole demand curve is going to shift to the left with an increase in income if gasoline is an inferior good. So we can think about what happens to the demand curve as income changes. We could even think about an in-between good that's neither normal nor inferior, the kind of good where if income increases there isn't a change in consumption. Well in that case, the demand curve wouldn't shift right or left, it would just stay where it was. Or suppose that some other price in the economy changed. Suppose for example, we start again with our original demand curve, where we have an initial price of $3 per gallon of gasoline, and originally we consume this level of gasoline. Now suppose that the price of car maintenance increases. It costs you more to maintain the car. Well, are you now going to drive more or less? The opportunity cost of driving a car has now increased because it's costing more to maintain the car. Whenever the opportunity cost of something increases, we do less of it. 
so we would drive the car less because the price of car maintenance has increased. And as we drive the car less, we would demand less gasoline. So at the same price, the same dollar, $3 price, if the price of car maintenance goes up, we drive the car less, and as a result, that point on the demand curve would shift to the left. That would happen for every other point on the demand curve. So the original demand curve would then shift to the left. Or think about the case of the price of bus rides going up. So again, we're going to look at the demand curve for gasoline, but now we're going to think about what if the price of bus rides increases. Whenever you take the bus, you don't take your car. Now, if the price of bus rides goes up, that means the opportunity cost of taking the bus has gone up. It's become relatively more expensive. And similarly, the opportunity cost of driving your car has gone down relative to taking buses. So if the price of bus rides goes up, you'll take the bus less, which means you'll drive more. As you drive more, you'll buy more gas. So if the price of gasoline is $3 and you originally consume this much gasoline, you're now going to consume more gasoline because you're taking the bus less and taking your car more. So that point's going to shift to the right. And that means that whole demand curve is going to shift to the right. This is the case of the price of a complement to gasoline going up. A complement is a good that gets used together with the good we're thinking about. Car maintenance goes together with gasoline. The more gasoline we buy and the more we drive the car, the more ca car maintenance we have to, have to do. So when the price of a complement goes up, that means that we're going to do less of the thing that's complementary. We're going to buy less gas. This, on the other hand, is an example of a substitute. Bus rides are a substitute to taking your car, a substitute to buying gasoline to be able to drive your car. When the price of a substitute goes up, you're going to substitute away from that and towards the thing that's become relatively cheaper, which in this case is taking your car. So again, we can see that a change in other prices might cause a shift in the demand curve. So it's important to realize that the only thing that can move us along a demand curve is a change in the price of the good that's on the horizontal axis, because that's what a demand curve is. Anything else that changes, whether it's income or other prices or other things that we might think about, will shift the demand curve and won't cause us to move along it.